That's a wonderful question. And I want to start with you from a structural uh, standpoint. So one of the things that the IEEE does is it is very involved in the process of accreditation, right? And ABET, the Accrediting Board for Engineering and Technology Accreditation Board, I'm a member of that, the, the society, the federation is about 85 years old. IEEE is the largest professional organization within that. So we have about 1,000 programs out of the 4,000 programs that ABET accredits globally in a variety of fields from applied and natural science, computing, engineering, and engineering and technology. I happen to lead the engineering delegation, which by the way, IEEE is just one of 32 member societies, right? So we have the civil engineers, the mechanical engineers, manufacturing engineers, everything in fact, including facilities management is part of that. One of the key ways in which ABET makes a difference is that it prepares or it certifies, if you will, uh, or to it demonstrates to an audience of industry, uh, to uh, constituents, students, practitioners, government, etc., that graduates are actually prepared for professional practice. So no matter what discipline you are studying, when you graduate from an accredited program, you're in fact prepared for professional practice. So this is one way in which IEEE engages very directly in the education of future professionals. Uh, we have an impact on the criteria. So if you're graduating in electrical engineering, computer engineering, bioengineering, telecommunication engineering, IEEE is responsible for a number of different fields. Our IEEE members, our volunteers, are serving as evaluators, are serving as team chairs. They actually define the criteria that in turn tells the industry what they can expect from a graduate. So it's a really close connection uh, in the way IEEE works. The other way I'd say that IEEE is involved, if you look at any educational institution, they have a mission and they have a vision that's very focused on what they want to do. They want to serve humanity, it's very broad, but they also take into account the views of industry. You know, I was a dean for a dozen years. I had an industry advisory board that would come and meet with me periodically in face-to-face -face mode. And our students would do something known as a senior design project showcase. So I would tell this to all my students, it doesn't matter how complex your project is, you could be working on the next generation CubeSat, building a formula car, a steel bridge, whatever your project is, you need to be able to explain it to somebody who doesn't know anything about engineering. What is the impact that it has on them, right? Uh, this requires skill, it requires communication skills, uh, being able to communicate with diverse audiences, bringing uh, different perspectives into the time and being able to explain it in such a way that the audience really finds it relevant. Now, what makes it really valid for me is that members of the industry advisory board literally go around and evaluate these projects. They have a very strict set of rubrics. They evaluate the projects, they give them feedback. And yes, our students love a little bit of competition. So we say best in showcase, you know, best project, and we have different awards. But in the end, we really want to encourage them to be thinking outward. In other words, all of our programs are outward focused, entrepreneurial engines of innovation. Let me repeat that. Outward focused, entrepreneurial engines of innovation. And industry is a big, big part of that. So within IEEE, structurally, we bring industry members, all of our, our standards committee has numerous members from industry, all our technical societies and communities. The converse side of that is industry members are very busy and we cannot overburden them with responsibilities. So we really, really try hard to make it such that they have the opportunity to commit time, to commit the effort, because without industry, IEEE certainly would not be at the forefront of technical directions. And the disruption that has come right now, I truly view that as an opportunity. It's probably a long time coming, right? Uh, why would we want to create this notion of scarcity and say, it's very tough to get into this class, it's very tough to get into this university. You need to be able to access learning when you need it, where you need it, and be able to practice it in a way that makes a sustainable difference for industry. And that is what IEEE's mission is, right? So if you ask me to articulate that, relevance is innovating in the face of adversity. And I believe that we're truly, truly doing that through our communities, through our societies and councils.